Ladies and gentlemen, gearheads and sea lovers, I can't quite believe that I'm saying this, but after 12 months, the dive shop is back again. This time we've got lots of things for us to look at, as well as some new people. That's right, it's been a long 12 months that we've not been with you, but we've got more people, more equipment, more fun and more adventures that we want to share with you. So thank you for joining us. Strap in for season two, as we've got lots of things to look at. But that's not all my friends, we've been busier than a swarm of triggerfish on a wreck. We've been working on our youth development program where we've taken 12 local people to become scuba divers. It's not just about training them how to dive, it's about risk assessment, risk management, and more important, how do we empower people? And speaking of the underwater world though, it's not been all sunshine and turtles here. Water temperatures have been off the charts, and it's been pretty disastrous. But it's not all doom and gloom. I'm gonna introduce you to the new team members here at the dive shop. We've got Kylie, we've got Steve, we've got Rax, and we've got Shaq. So hold on to your snorkels, friends, because the dive shop is back. And we're gonna have a look right now. So Nora and I are absolutely thrilled to welcome you back to the dive shop. And guess what folks? We've got some fresh faces on board that'll make your flippers flutter with excitement. So without further ado, let's meet the new recruits who are making waves this season. First up, we have Rax, the powerhouse of this operation. She's not just the business head, she's the brains, the organizer, and the voice of reason. When the currents get tough, Rax keeps us steady. And trust me, we need someone to keep us in check. Now let's talk tech. Our next newbie is Steve, our tech guru with a fiery passion that can only be rivaled by a Welsh dragon. He's the man who will make sure our underwater adventures are safe and well equipped by making sure that everything is serviced and maintained. And then there's Shaq, the baby of the group. Remember that catchy song? Well, Shaq's got the enthusiasm of a school of baby sharks combined. He's taken on his crucial role of boat skipper, ensuring we sail smoothly through the scuba escapades. Last but not least, let's say hello to Kylie. She's joining us all the way from Canador College, and we couldn't be more excited to have her. These fantastic four individuals are going to add a whole new dimension to the dive shop, and we can't wait for you to get to know them better. So make sure you drop by and say hi. Hello. Hi. <laughs> so we're here with Kaylee today, Kaylee Richmond. She's from Ontario, Canada. Uh, and she came with the Canada group that came to work on a new project on the reefs. So soon she found out that it wasn't enough time. Two weeks passed way too fast for her. So at that time she got open water and advanced open water certified. And now she decided to come back um, for rescue and dive master. Uh, she's been here since September. Uh, she's about to finish her dive master now. And she's going to start helping us to prepare the uh, project again for the Canada group coming back next year in May. So Kaylee, tell us then a little bit about how your experience was the last time you came here and why did you actually decide to come back? Uh, why did I come back? So basically the first time around that I was here was with uh, the Canada College group. I'm an environmental technology student uh, so we do a lot of outdoor work mostly in boreal forests of Ontario. Um, a lot of work with water, a lot of work with soil, uh, so doing work outside is nothing new to us. When we came back, the, or the first time around, sorry, we uh, came as a large group and most of us had never done any work in the ocean, uh, so it was a big, exciting experience for us. Uh, there is no ocean where we're from, so it's completely, <laughs> completely new territory. Yeah, it was, a, it was a big shock coming here because I'd never been to the Caribbean. It's very, very, very warm, and uh, at first I wasn't good with the heat, but that's okay. It, it didn't take too long to get used to. Why I continued, uh, two weeks was not long enough for diving because it's a very expensive hobby but it's a hobby that I'm not giving up anytime soon. I wanted to know everything that I could about diving. The theory was interesting, 
the diving was interesting, so I just I needed to come back and continue it through. Yeah. Good. Uh, so at that time, you guys started working on a project. Why don't you tell us a little bit about what you guys were doing and what you're actually helping us to do right now for the next group coming next year? Yeah. So the basis around the Candor project was to see whether or not helping manually clean algae off the reef would help it regrow, would help the fish populations to thrive, things like that. Uh, so we helped set up uh, the four plots. So we had two control plots that we don't touch, we just use it as something to reference back to. And then the first two plots, A and B, are the ones that we manually clean off of. So the way we came in to help was help take baseline data, which was for <laughs> Uh, fish identification, reef associated organisms, substrate analysis, uh, just at different measurements, different increments. Um, luckily for us, environmental technicians were trained to take data samples, like data samples, do field work uh, using field procedures. It's a, the whole, app, that's the whole point of our program. Um, the only difference was we had to take that knowledge that we already had and bring it into a completely new environment uh, and underwater where we can't communicate yeah. as easily as we can when we're working in the bush. Um, so yeah, we did a lot, of, a lot of measurements and we did a lot of cleaning, which was personally my favorite part, the, the actual physical cleaning. Yeah. You kind of just forget what you're doing. You kind of forget you're underwater. You just, yeah. just yeah. keep going. Yeah. yeah. So what's next, do you think, in your diving life after diving. you become a dive master? After I become a dive master, well, I have to go home first, but um, I basically just want to try all types of diving. This is the only place I have dove. Yeah. There's, there's tons of other places that I can go. There's tons of other types of diving. Um, I definitely want to do my IDC. I definitely want to do my IDC for Yay. sure. Just because, I don't know, it's just, it's nice working with new divers because it humbles you and yeah. like rem reminds yeah. you what it's like to be the new one. Yeah. Um, but no, and then being from Canada, I personally very much like winter, so cold water, dry suit diving, and ice diving is on the list. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm from Patagonia, I'm from cold weather we too, but here I got absolutely spoiled. There's no way and I was crazy. And I have confirmed again. it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, ice diving's, it's happening. It's happening. I am going to Switzerland at Christmas time. <laughs> Well, we are having a blast here with Kaylee. She's been very, very helpful. One of the best interns, seriously, we've ever had. Oh. So we look forward to have her back here again, maybe <laughs> in May. May time. Possibly. Maybe we'll see. Coming. We'll yeah, see. You yeah. might see me again. As a newly certified instructor helping out. <laughs> maybe. We don't know. <laughs> so thank you very much, Kaylee, for your assistance there and for being go. back here with oh, us. Thank you for having me. Bye. Bye. So earlier this year, we got together with the guys at the Empower team, which is part of the Ministry of Education. We approached them about developing a new youth development program, which was about empowering young men on the island. Of course, we based this training around learning to dive, but what we wanted to do was make learning a new lifelong skill. For many of these people, they won't have done any formal education or any formal training since they left school. So it was great to link the base academic qualifications or studies that we do in diving with a big dollop of risk management and planning to ensure that this course really added value to their day-to-day -day lives. We had 12 participants from Cariku and our neighbouring island of Petit Martinique and we spent an intensive week learning how to dive as well as really focusing on the academic side and risk management side of dive training. This Friday we had a formal certification process with the Permanent Secretary to the Ministry of Caracou and Petit Martinique and most of the participants turned up and we had a fabulous time. For the whole team at DIFA it's been a fantastic experience working with these young men and women, working with the Ministry of Education and the Ministry of Caracou and Petit Martinique Affairs and the Empower team and really looking at how we can deliver sustainable change and how we can deliver learning activities for people going forward into the future. I'm really excited for 2024 as it looks like we're going to continue to run this program and develop it into more advanced dive training but also more aspects of 
risk management, risk mitigation and planning. For us, this has been a fantastic community experience and I feel as though we're really able to add our expertise back into the community and add some real value. So what else have we been doing? Well, diving, of course. We've been making a splash with a big group of volunteers this year, working on the nursery until the water's got a little bit too warm. So, like Gary said in the intro, yes, the temperature in the water has been actually quite high this year. Um, I remember I went home first week of September uh, and the temperature was already around 30 degrees, which it's pretty cool for us. I mean, it's nice to go back into shorts and rush guard, but it's not so nice for the corals. Unfortunately, at the end of my journey, when I came back, I saw loads of bleaching. Uh, so distinctive that you can actually see it from the boat. It was actually quite heartbreaking uh, to see Sharky's one, Mabuya Garden, Whirlpool, Jagadan, and most importantly, our coral nursery absolutely bleached. Uh, unfortunately, today I think up to 90% of our uh, corals, uh, particularly the sacorns that we have growing on the trees and on the uh, lines that we set up this year, I think will perish. It's been the hardest dives I've ever had to do uh, around here. Uh, so much hard work put in this year and everything just gone because of water temperature. Um, we didn't have it as bad as in Florida where you could actually see the corals just like basically frying because of temperature but here we're definitely not seeing the polyps out anymore uh, all the Susan Tell is leaving the building so it's actually quite sad uh, very very sad but uh, hey hope well, we will hope for the best of course and restart the project as soon as we can but anyway I will leave you with some Im images and footage that we took from the uh, bleaching event uh, in Cairo this year Nora's also found a new love, the love of macro. She's finding and shooting photos and videos of some of the most obscure and small critters that we have on the island. Gary has also been doing some more CCR diving and training, hopefully with lots more to come. Mostly, we've just been having fun.